In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a smart garage door opener for only $10. So I've got a few objectives with this garage door opener. First, I wanna be able to open and close the garage door from my phone, from the internet, from anywhere. Second, I wanna know if the garage door is opened or closed. Third, I wanna be able to control the garage door with a smart assistant like Google Home, Alexa, Siri. And fourth, I wanna get a notification when the garage door has been open for too long. So let's say 15 minutes, if it's been open for that long, send me a notification so I know it's open. Um, so I'm going to show you how I've done all of that for under $10. So these are the four components you're going to need along with some wires and some basic hand tools. So first of all, what we got here is an ESP32. So essentially what this is, is a microcontroller that has Wi-Fi built in and it allows you to put programming code on here and you can control inputs and outputs. It's a very basic thing. These are very cheap. You can get for them for about $2. Uh, very cheap. So this next to it is uh, a bit of a platform. This isn't a requirement, but I thought this would make it easier for me. Uh, this has a barrel jack here for a power input and uh, the uh, ESP32 will slot right in there and it allows me better access to all the inputs and outputs as well as some um, shared grounds and voltage outputs. And also I have a couple different USB inputs and outputs. Um, to make life just a little easier. Again, that's not necessary, but it was only about $2, so it wasn't a big deal for me to pick that up and make my life a little easier. Next thing you're gonna need is just a basic relay. Now this connects to the ESP32, and this is what completes the circuit to send the signal to your garage door opener. Uh, very basic, again, just under $2. And uh, the last thing we're gonna need is a sensor. So one part of the sensor goes on the garage door and the other goes on the, um, the wood frame beside it. And when the garage door moves out of the way, then we know the door is open. And when those close and get together, we know that the door is closed. So very basic setup. And again, this was all under $10 shipped and after tax and everything directly to my home. And that's Canadian dollars. So you out there playing along in the US, you're gonna be able to do it for maybe about $7. So that is the hardware we're gonna need. Now I'll go over the software side of it just a little bit. Now I said I'll go over the software side briefly because it's pretty complex and I wanna cover this deeper in another video. So basically what I'm gonna say here is just the components I use, not how to use them. That will again be in another video. I will have links to all the products all the code and everything in the description below. So keep an eye out for that. But um, the three main components that I'm using here. So the first thing you're gonna need is the Arduino IDE. Now this is where you're writing your code and you're actually uploading it to the ESP32 microchip. And other than that, you're also going to need a software called Blink. This is B-L-Y-N-K. This is a free online service, and what this is doing is kind of acting as an intermediary between your phone and the ESP32. So the ESP32 is communicating with the Blink platform, and your phone is then communicating with the Blink platform uh, to be able to control it. This is a much safer way to do it rather than doing port forwarding and opening up things on your home internet firewall. So this is a very good way to do it. It's free for up to a certain amount of devices. In our case, we're using one. It's free, it's simple, it works really well. Uh, so the third thing that we're gonna need is called If This Then That or IFTTT. And this is the site that's gonna allow us to integrate with, in our example here, Google Home. So what we're gonna be able to do is open and close the garage with our voice using just this simple phrase. And uh, those are the three main components that we're gonna be using on the software side. Again, I'll go into them deeper in another video, but for right now, you have a basic idea of what we're gonna be using to actually uh, control the microcontrollers and the garage door itself. Now, before doing any of this work, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is unplug the garage door opener. Now we're gonna get into the soldering and the wiring of the ESP32 in a moment, but next we're gonna talk about the, the wiring in the garage itself. So there's 
really two main things that you need to wire. First of all is gonna be the sensor, so that, uh, that little white magnetic sensor. Um, so for me, I'm gonna put it right about over here. So I'm gonna be able to screw it into the door and into the wood frame right here. And uh, that's gonna be a very simple wire run. So again, I'm gonna need some, some wire. I'm gonna run it just up in here. And then this actually right here is where my ESP32 and everything is gonna mount. I got my power. I have my wires for the garage door opener button that I'm gonna hack into. And uh, this is just a nice place for me to put it. So that brings me to the second piece we're gonna need is the, the wire that actually goes to either the garage door opener or to the garage door opener button if you already have one close. So this wire here, this is some old Radio Shack speaker wire, and that runs all the way up here, all the way along up to my garage door opener itself. And it actually plugs into the same place that your button would plug into. So this is the button that opens and closes the garage door. And uh, pretty much the ESP32 is doing the exact same thing this button's doing. It's plugged into the same uh, terminals on the garage door opener itself. So the second way you could do this, instead of running a wire all the way to the opener, uh, I only did that because I already had a wire running there for some reason, someone had run that in the past. But what I was planning on doing before I realized that was I was just going to interject my wire into these wires, just hook that up, and uh, I was gonna run that to my ESP32, and then I would be able to control it from there without running too many wires all the way up and having to staple them up and then run them into the garage door opener. So uh, those are the main components. That's the little bit of wiring that you're going to have to do. And I'll show you on the garage door opener side what I did to put those wires into the terminals. All right, now we are up here at the garage door opener. And you can see right here, I have two sets of wires going into the garage door opener uh, button terminals. So uh, it's going to be different for different garage door openers. But for me, it was these two on the right here. Um, and I knew that just because the garage door opener button was already going in there. So I just put my own wires in. All you need is a little screwdriver like this. You press down on that little orange terminal underneath and you can put the wires in and out. It's really simple and a very quick install. All right, now that we are done with the wiring in the garage, I've come inside to uh, finish the soldering on the circuit board. So uh, what I need to do is I need to get to ground and voltage to the relay and then a signal to the relay as well. So that really should be the only soldering that I need to do just because uh, everything else I'll be able to use uh, this style of uh, jumper cable with uh, the female end to just make jumper connections from um, whatever I need to uh, the wires that we ran in the garage. And then the other side, we will just do a crimp connection. And uh, that is it. So for now, we're just gonna make three solder joints here, and then we will go back out to the garage. So we've got our soldering done on the relay. We got our purple one going to voltage output on the board. And then we have the yellow one, which is the ground, also going to the board. And the uh, D1, which is the input that triggers the signal on the relay, uh, is the orange one. And that again goes to the board, one of the digital outputs. So the last thing we need is to have two more wires with the female end uh, for the door sensor. And that is currently installed in the garage as we just did. So, so the door sensor is going to use one of the GPIOs as an input, and it's going to need also one wire going to the ground. So we are going to use these two female ends to just jump right onto the board. And then I'll do the same thing I did before where I just cut them here. And then we are going to crimp join them to the wires that we ran in the garage previously. All right, we're back here in the garage. And the next step is to mount the actual controller and get it wired up to the wires that we ran earlier. So. Here's the, the piece of wood that we put up and it's gonna be right beside the router, uh, which will give a good coverage. 
and here is our set of wires. So this is the one that has actually live voltage to it right now coming from the uh, garage door opener itself. And then here is the wire that goes to the sensor that we mounted earlier up there. Now the next thing we're gonna do is get the controller itself mounted up here. And I'm going to space it a little bit off the wood with um, some piece of tubing uh, that'll cut to a small size and uh, use that to screw it in and it'll be insulated and uh, nicely mounted. So let's go do that right now. So another nice thing about this extra board that I bought here to mount the ESP32 is that it has a uh, couple of mounting holes as well. So it's, uh, it's coming really handy. So I'm going to use those just to mount it up here and uh, that should do it. There we go. All right, so our garage door opener is still unplugged. So now we are safe to take these wires, which come from the opener itself. Uh, we can take these and get them threaded into the relay itself. Now it doesn't matter which one goes where um, because you're just completing a circuit, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but you do want to make sure that you are going in the center terminal of the relay as well as the normally open or the NO terminal. Okay, last step is to get our two wires crimped onto the wires that come from our door sensor. Now we've just got to get those plugged into D12. around. Well, there we go. We are all mounted up and wired up. Now the last step is going to be to plug in our power, which is the easiest part. And there we go. It boots up. I'm going to quickly uh, open up the app and show you how I control it. So as you can see, I'm using an app called Blink to control the garage door. Um, so this, like I said before, acts like an in-between <laughs> between your smart garage door opener and um, your phone. So essentially what I got here, and like I said, I'll go into more details in uh, another video on how I set this up, but we open up the device. Now I have an option to open or close the door. Uh, you can see the status is open. The garage door is currently open. So if I hit close, we close the door. And that is how you build and install a smart garage door opener. Uh, the part I didn't really get to show you is the uh, programming and the software side, but like I said, I'm going to show that in another video because there is quite a bit, uh, quite a bit of details there. And so I'll go over the software and the app setup and the wiring schematics in another video. So thanks for sticking around and making it this far. And let me know if you build this project yourself. Let me know your thoughts on it. Just leave a comment below. Uh, thanks for sticking around and if you guys are interested in um, you know car stuff like we typically do uh, Make sure to give our other videos a look. We got some cool things going on We are building a uh, Nissan Silvia like this one behind me and we got a project car back there It's a furious Civic and we got another Civic that Matt is working on that. He's putting a turbo into so uh, Thanks for sticking around and we'll see you guys in the next video